And I think that we're live now. I think Are we're live. live. Yeah, Are we're live. live. Let me awesome. just switch the scenes. There we go. I got I got there it. We we're live. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Back Hi, again. Everyone. Welcome to Live at the Hive, episode 138. Um, Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. Matt Stefanich, producer Matt. April McCall. And if you've been a longtime viewer, you may recognize me. I'm Courtney Castle. Oh, yes, yes we today. have Courtney Castle back on, uh, guest yeah. starring for today, which will be nice. We haven't seen uh, Courtney on the live for a few episodes now, but uh, <laughs> it's good to it's see you, while. Court, for sure. I they can't no. keep me away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, but we love having you on, and we know everyone, uh, all the all the people in the audience, like like seeing you and mm -hmm. insights and stuff. So yeah, so this uh, this week's episode is going to be a bit different uh, without Dan, but uh, I think we have some good stuff to talk about for email marketing. So. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times, I think uh, at the very beginning of the week, we've been talking about this with uh, the bees and stuff, just basically um, more towards, I guess, like how a lot of, I guess, old marketers or new marketers are kind of brushing away the the power that is email right. marketing um, and not necessarily the effectiveness of it, but more so kind of um, the creative ways that you can use your email marketing platforms, uh, how you're engaging with your audience, what kind of information are you sending them uh, with email marketing. So I think we have some really cool stuff uh, to talk about with that. Some great examples um, from emails that we're subscribed to and that we've received uh, recently throughout the week. Um, so I think it'll be good. Now, Stacy, Stacy says, hey, ladies and Matt. Awesome. Hey, Stacy. Oh, Hope you're enjoying your Friday, Stace. Yeah. <laughs> She's working and watching, I bet. She's yeah, working well. Exactly, yeah. right? <laughs> of course. Cool. So let's uh let's just dive in. Maybe um let's talk about I think I think we should open it up with more of kind of like a conversation about maybe why people um are kind of giving other marketers the impression that you know email marketing is dead right and it's maybe mm -hmm. uh, a strategy that you shouldn't be pursuing uh when in reality it's a it's a really effective way to um get some people uh in the top of your uh, sales funnel but also kind of uh, get them engaged and qualify them uh, throughout the process mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, the discussion you mentioned that we had earlier this week with the team was funny because every few years, um, some articles start trending that's all like email is dead. And, um, you know, I feel like a lot of the time they're just trying to introduce some new topic and breathe some new life into it. Right. But um, as a marketer, it's kind of funny to see that happen because email marketing is a huge channel and like it mm -hmm. might not be the most shiny new thing. Um, so I think like to no fault of their own, a lot of marketers often chase whatever the newest channel is. Um, you know, you may have just opened a TikTok account and might be creating content for it, mm -hmm. but your poor email campaign hasn't been revised in years. So mm -hmm. I get the urge to do whatever's fun and new, but I think that's definitely like where this kind of comes from is some people mm -hmm. don't see it as exciting as other channels. But. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think too, uh, on that lines, I think, I know if you've been in the marketing industry for years, like I'm talking about maybe 20, 20 some plus years, uh, you've been using, uh, maybe you're using like the same platform that you've been using all along, right? And it's not really right. offering you proper features um, that you can engage your audience with. Maybe um, the email uh, templates that they offer you, they're not very customizable. You can't really right. brand them at all, right? Um, so you might feel very limited in, um, mm -hmm. in what you can do with email marketing. And I mean, that's okay, but, uh, there's platforms out there and we'll show you some of them. There's MailChimp, there's Active Campaign, um, and they all offer something different, but um, right. they definitely bring email marketing uh, up to the next level, so to speak, right? With, with the customization mm -hmm. options and stuff. Yeah, For sure. And, and to that point, it's kind of funny that people, um, like when they do have their platform, it's kind of flip-flopped for me. Like when I started in this industry, everyone had email marketing and was investing in a platform and had to be convinced to do social media. And now it's kind of the other way around where a lot of clients that we work with, they have every social media account, but then maybe they, you know, they don't even have anything set up, but like a WordPress automated right um kind of form right not oh, even yeah. an email platform oh mm -hmm. for sure especially so, with covid too yeah, right i mean yeah. people with with covid i mean people were kind of before uh covid when uh people were still working in offices and stuff like that people were just kind of shrugging away social media right they're like oh like we don't need to invest in social why are we investing in social media right 
but now that everyone's at home and everyone's through social media and this is how people are connecting with each other exactly yeah yeah, people are starting to be like oh like maybe we should have been investing in social and they're kind of ramping it up um really quickly and they're disregarding their email campaigns where people are still opening up emails i'd probably argue more than ever now right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so it's definitely an extreme way uh effective way for sure yeah agreed yeah that was that was one of the stats in the one article that we'll be chatting about that really just like threw me was um like obviously everyone still uses email but just the Mm -hmm. sheer mass number of them i think it said like 320 billion daily emails by 2021 yeah that's that's a lot of of emails it's a lot of content so wow yeah absolutely for sure Alrighty, uh, so let's dive into the first article that we have here. So we we have a number of articles that will kind of now they all touch upon the same thing about kind of how to plan, execute tips for your email marketing, and these are all really um, really effective tips and strategies. So as we go uh, through these, we're not going to be like obviously reading the article all the way through, but we'll go through the important points. We'll give you some of our perspectives on whether or not we agree with it. Uh, maybe uh, an example of something that we've used in the past uh, that goes with that tip, example, or strategy. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll get you guys feedback in the chat and uh, see if you agree, or if you have any questions at any time, like do feel free to uh, leave a comment in the chat. So yeah, our first- our first article is going to be from Life Marketing. Um, this is more of like a how to plan and execute uh, your effective uh, email uh, marketing strategy. And they kind of go through um, some of the kind of ROI ratings here, um, which some people may be surprised about. I mean, a yeah. lot of times people want to go straight to affiliate marketing. They want to kind of go the influencer route. But the ROI, uh, according to this chart at least, is is putting it all the way down at the 47 percentile, mm-hmm. right? Um, while email marketing, it's it's all the way at the other opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. So, I mean, those people who are saying email marketing is dead, um, I mean, this uh, look, the, right? these statistics tend to disagree, right? Mm-hmm. And that supports my favorite thing about email marketing is the control you can have over your traffic spikes. Um, because mm-hmm. you know, often you can see a direct correlation. Mm-hmm. Perhaps you made some serious optimizations on the site and you know within the next few weeks, you can probably expect to see an increase in organic or maybe you've posted on Facebook and you see a bit of a, you know, a bit of a increase from that post, but really emails are much more qualified people. And from, you know, the ROI perspective, I know my click through rate and the consistency of doing that over time Mm -hmm. is going to give me great, uh, like very well qualified traffic too, in terms of average time on page and whether they actually engage with the asset or whatever it was I was delivering. So I love the quality of it. Yeah, I like it too. I think it too. I think, um, you know, people giving out their email addresses, I think since, as we mentioned before, there's been, you, we get consumed with so many emails, but um, so people handing out their emails and actually giving it to you is actually um, a win, right? So, you know, those people are actually interested in consuming your content or anything you have to say, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I really like email marketing. I think it's a, a great way and it's definitely not dead. So for sure. So some of the first tips that they give in this article, uh, the first one would be kind of uh, focusing on improving your key metrics, right? So what Mm -hmm. metrics are you looking to measure when you start um, an email marketing campaign? They're going to be different metrics than um, than your Facebook, Google ads, uh, for Mm -hmm. sure. Uh, And some of these are going to be the subscriber growth, how your subscriber lists are growing, the conversions, of course, like Courtney was saying, the click through rates beforehand, um, but also kind of the unsubscribe, uh, the bounce rate uh, retention, um, as well as kind of, I mean, the the spam uh, complaint, uh, not necessarily, I mean, you, you definitely want to keep an eye on it, but there's definitely other metrics, in my opinion, um, that you would want to look at. Obviously, open yeah. rate, click-through rate, uh, etc. Yeah, um, I agree, Matt. So unsubscribes and like spam filters, like obviously if it starts to become ridiculous, you could get like a ban on your account. But unsubscribes, mm-hmm. I find, get a lot of attention. And I find there's nothing, they're not necessarily negative. Like, I'm trying no. to qualify my list. So I don't mm-hmm. want you to stay on it if you're not a potential customer, you know, and you're affecting Absolutely. my actual rates that right. way. So. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people, like, they start off with these lists of, you know, um, a couple thousand people uh, even mm-hmm. I, I've seen, right? And as the list kind of gets shorter and shorter, people begin to panic and they're like, what happened to my thousand contact yeah. list? And it's like, okay, well, look, this is 
what you're supposed to be doing with your email marketing, right? You're supposed to be taking this list and you just don't keep spamming the people with the same right. email. You take it down and I'll show you later in, act, in the active campaign, which is a tool that we use here, but it's basically like you're thinning out the list, you're thinning out the unqualified leads, you're making people more uh, higher quality leads, your lead scoring as you go along, which is extremely, right. extremely Very important right. for your campaigns, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And a thing that I'd actually point out is a lot of people don't actually have their metrics synced up. So their email platform is sometimes independent from their Google Analytics or whatever they're using yes. for their website traffic. Mm -hmm. And often that can hurt you because your click through rate is, uh, which I would say is like kind of the holy grail of email metrics. Everyone wants a super high click through mm -hmm. rate because that's the goal. Mm -hmm. But where are they actually clicking? So often you'll see a heat map which shows you where people are actually clicking. Are they clicking through on that? landing page right. you want them to visit or did everyone just click the logo because they didn't know who you were because they're not qualified mm -hmm. right so like in my eyes i want to see not only the click through rate but i want to see what did they do after they clicked through absolutely so if you don't have that synced up properly it's harder to see so i would just say to everyone now just double check your mailchimp account or whatever it is and make sure you have the analytics set up it takes sure. like five minutes and it'll be well worth it yeah <laughs> absolutely all in one spot absolutely Perfect. for sure now, going off of that, um, they have a little bit more of kind of a uh, in depth on maybe where your signups are getting or where you're getting your signups from, right? Um, so they have this really cool pie chart here, which is showing uh, the different types of ways that people are uh, getting email signups, uh, whether that be through uh, the slide up, uh, hello bar, feature box, sidebar, uh, Twitter, and even SlideShare mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. And I mean, each one of these are going to be, I, I mean, don't necessarily just say, okay, slide up is uh 36.7 percent it's the largest right. piece i'm gonna go with that but i think it really depends on what industry you're in you know um mm -hmm. what product you're selling and uh those leads i i think understanding the cut like where your customers are that's going to be the number one uh place for you to gain those leads like for example april um mm -hmm. we uh had a webinar this uh this week and um yep. You know, uh, the certain demographic of the webinar, uh, it's it's might be a little bit tougher to get a hold of people just because um, the webinar's topic was on uh, uh, saving for retirement, right? So uh, it's a little bit harder to reach those people because they're not on the internet as much as you would think. Right. But um, you know, Facebook uh, was an incredible, uh, incredibly great Driver, place to yeah. start driving some of these leads through uh, forms and, and things like that, right? So um, yeah, keeping it simple and straight to the point, and making sure that you know we're. Using utilizing um, who these people are before we set up the strategy and then collect their email. So um, very effective for, as you said, the demographic, right? So yeah, I have to agree with it. This is a good overview, but it definitely depends on the industry. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that's funny. I had a similar experience. I had um, a client of mine as a very senior audience as well. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. obviously some of the traditional go-to tactics as like digital first people right. that we'd normally go to. Um, although I do like traditional channels still, I'm very omni-channel. It was difficult to find um, just exactly how to access them. And um, I ended up marrying up a digital guide with uh, actual workshops um, nice. that were local in town. So mm -hmm. people, we'd connect with them through their existing community, like the senior centers and things like that. And then once they actually saw us and spoke to us and all the assets we gave them were also designed for that as well with like, easy to read, simple font, like thing, like large font, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually worked out very well. I just find the credibility factor, you kind of got to gain their trust first before you start emailing yeah. them and sending them links and things like For that. For sure. And, and yeah. like yeah. we said beforehand, email is extremely personal, right? I mean, um, people are more likely to kind of maybe give uh, like uh, either like a social media account, um, mm -hmm. their Instagram handle for a DM or something like that. But an email is kind of like, whoa, like, why are you asking for my email? And there might be like a little yeah. bit of a negative stigma tied uh, tied around it just mm -hmm. because, you know, retail is probably the, the, one of the number one right. industries that try and drive um, uh, email campaigns, yeah. right? Uh, after you check out with your purchase, they ask for your email. A lot of people say, say no, I'm already yeah. in your system, right? Um, but <laughs> there's there's definitely, uh, like Courtney said, there's, there's better ways to go about it where you're engaging with your demographic uh, and you're building that relationship with them, right? Because I think if you're going right. to be launching email campaigns, campaigns in 2020 it's just not sending out the emails crossing your fingers mm -hmm. and hoping for open and a click right it's building that right. relationship with your base with uh your email list and uh nurturing uh nurturing those leads uh really right yeah agreed yeah, yeah and 
I, I think to be fair, email marketing isn't easy. Um, not that like any channel is particularly easier than others. They all have challenges, but I find because you need like the design component is so important. And then the copy component and the right. analytics, like it's truly like the essence of all things combined. So like, if you have a really poor design, um, you know, then it's going to hurt your open rates and your click through rates right there. So it doesn't matter if you have the best written right. email ever. So it's, it takes kind of like the strongest of all of those kind of talents that we have on a marketing team to make a really great email campaign. Mm -hmm. And so I find most, when I like 99% of the time, when I look under the hood at someone's email marketing, it's a super basic autoresponder because they weren't really sure how to do anything else. Yeah. Right? right. Just a thank you for subscribing. Right? Here's a link. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel personal. And on that note, I think Bate put a comment down here. He said, it's always nice when companies take the extra step to personalize their email marketing techniques. Then he's more excited to open it. Yeah. Very true. No, yes, absolutely. and personalization is nothing new. That's existed for a long time now. So definitely, you know, at the least, if not even yeah. like a uh, name personalization, but even location and other fields you right. might have mm -hmm. about them. Yep. Um, so especially as you focus on local marketing, like if you're a small local retail store, things like that, there's different opportunities. You know, what's hot in decor and Kitchener right now, things like that, mm -hmm. where you can speak exactly. more directly to the person mm -hmm. is going to help. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's exactly right. And it leads into our next point on. Uh, and I think we've kind of been already on this for a bit, but kind of knowing your target audience yeah. and how to build up that target audience. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, in this life marketing article, they kind of go through understanding the kind of problems that uh, your audience is having. Right. How you're going to be solving those. And that can be communication problems as well. Right. Um, yeah. You can also be kind of creating a picture. We do this a lot, um, creating a picture of the ideal customer, right? Uh, creating profiles, making sure that we group them by location, interest, gender, et cetera, uh, focusing on the right niche and then analyzing the competition to see what you're up against, right? Yeah. So, I mean, sure. April, you were talking about beforehand, we've been receiving emails from a particular person <laughs> for years now and yeah. um, they're quite creative and we'll show them later, Very but creative, it's almost yeah. like you don't want to click it because you don't want to go further down uh, their Damn. email marketing list, right? But at the same time, it's good to open up those emails and see like the guts of them because you're seeing what your competition is doing, mm -hmm. right? You're seeing maybe how they're laying out their emails, what kind of content mm -hmm. are they offering their audiences in their emails, right? Yeah, it's always good to definitely see what your competition is doing. And um, if you were enticed enough to click it, let's say, because you're used to getting so many a day, then maybe it's worth the click just to investigate, right? Absolutely, for mm -hmm. sure. And I think Stacy has a, a comment here on Facebook. So Stacy is asking, uh, do we feel that uh, we need to incentivize our audiences um, to get their email? Uh, so I guess that would be, um, I guess, signups and things like that. Do you feel like um, they need an incentive in order for them to give uh, like a marketing or an email automation of their email? Um, yes, and I don't think that necessarily means to be a freebie or a lead magnet per se. I just right. feel like email marketing has kind of been abused in terms of being spammed. Like we all get those horrible emails day in, day out that are just bad and yeah, should not exist. So I think yeah. it's kind of hurt the credibility of the channel. So right. it depends on who you are when you're asking for the email. Are you a recognizable like global brand that they trust? If you're a really small business owner, then yeah, you got to prove yourself before they're going to give you your email. Absolutely. Because we've all given away emails and gotten spammed, right? For sure. Yeah. So and I'd say hundred. there's definitely a transparency there that you should be letting your audience know as well. Like, look, like we're not going to spam you and let them straight yeah. up know that. Right. Um, it's okay to say like, I'm not going to spam you or you know what, like yeah. you won't get more than maybe two emails a month from me or something like that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, so it's That's really the classic good. classic tagline ever since. Casella came out is that we do not send you spam. It says it in every Castell checkbox yeah. now. Yeah. We don't yeah. send spam, I swear. Exactly. But <laughs> yeah, just straight up tell them what you're going to send them, is what yeah, I, I say. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I, mean, I don't mind that. Like, um, if I've given again my email list uh, or my email address, then and I click that box, I'm I'm showing that I trust them, right? Like I'm saying, okay, that sounds good. Um, I like what I see so far. So um, yeah, definitely worth investigating further, sure. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and if anything, gives you more of a, an opportunity to segment your email marketing lists, mm -hmm. right? Maybe uh, if maybe it's, you know, someone uh, within the marketing thing uh, in, in your sign up form, you say, I do not want to receive more than X amount of emails and you give them a few more mm -hmm. options. And it's another way for you to segment your list, right? Yeah. 
Cool. Definitely. Yeah, and I find that often email marketing solves a problem that a lot of people come to me with about their websites and that we've dealt with like at Honeypot, I know, is mm -hmm. you maybe have many different people coming to your website with different needs. Right. So, you know, depending on who it is, you have different conversations and very different things to say to your visitors. Mm -hmm. Like some may be customers, some may be affiliate mm -hmm. partners, or maybe you have B2B and B2C products, for example. Right. And e email marketing solves that problem because it kind of allows you to like take it off the website, you know, sign yeah. up here. And now I can speak to you exactly about what you want, mm -hmm. which is a problem with a lot of people because they're like, I have yeah. one homepage. How do I talk to six different people? Yeah. Yeah. Personas. Exactly. So. Yeah which is why segmenting I think is very important. And then that way you can just tailor your message so you don't have to spam mm -hmm. your whole list, right? You're just talking to a specific <laughs> audience. So. Yeah, for sure. And it sounds logical, but oftentimes I'll find the exact same form across the entire website that I'll do the exact same <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's that's like, this is your, you're trying to gain information about them. Don't give it away, mm -hmm. Yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Entice them. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Who want more. Um, the next tip we have here is uh, personalizing your email messages. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is extremely important. And Miguel has a really good comment in here. Uh, and Miguel says that strongly written mm -hmm. subject lines catches attention whenever he has a phone full of notifications. And it's true. I mean, we're talking about it with uh, with uh, one of the um, email lists that we're subscribed to, April, where um, they yeah. have really creative and uh, sometimes creative. shocking uh, yeah. uh, subject lines. And it's true. It, it catches your attention, right? Um, and this article work. here, it kind of it talks about what are the most kind of effective personalization tactics that you can use. Definitely email list segmentations. Again, yes. extremely important. Individualized um, email messaging, right? Using the first name, last name. Keeping the sex short, but also um, informative as well. Um, and we've, ever, we've also had... Um, Interestingly enough, um, there's a few kind of email examples that we'll give later on uh, in the show. And it's kind of, it's very branded. The email is very branded, uh, has uh, lots of logos on it. It's very colorful, right? But in the past, we've actually used just text-based emails where it looks like an, a personalized email that you're receiving from someone. It's structured like a regular email, nothing flashy on it, no headshots or anything, right? Um, and right. we've actually seen that, look, when, when someone opens that up, it it all it looks more like a personalized email they're like oh yeah. my god like matt sent me an email um it has my name in it everything like that and they're going to be more likely to open it up so it, it's an interesting thing that you can kind of play around with in terms of personalizing your email uh mm -hmm. and making people feel that this email is for them specifically and just not part of like a list right. of thousands of people right yeah and that's a great point because um that's actually one of the three kind of like pillars of email marketing templates. You have the personal text one-to-one -one as though you literally just opened Gmail and wrote someone a message. You have like the succinct call to action and then you have the longer form sales one. Mm -hmm. um, and I know if Dan were here, he's a huge fan of the personalized text and yeah. those kinds of, you know, don't be shy, like be a good copywriter, be concise, yeah. but don't be shy about um, the length of it. If you have something to say, um, one of my favorite quotes is a, a Seth Godin quote, which is why waste a sentence saying nothing. Mm -hmm. And when I edit ruthlessly, that's what I do. If you put something in there like, welcome to my email list or something ridiculous, which <laughs> is in there sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, no, two seconds. Don't waste your time saying right. nothing. So Yeah, especially at the digital, digital age, right? Like people are, again, being bombarded by a whole bunch of emails. And, um, you know, if they happen to click it, you have that, that chance, right? Like it's mm -hmm. it's got to be quick. It's got to be right straight to the point where, you know, they're going to click yeah. off of it and then maybe unsubscribe even exactly for yeah, sure i think we even mentioned a cookie email like subject line he often sometimes gets people's attention these days and <laughs> people are kind of breaking out of their brand you know safety yep. net a little bit and mm -hmm. trying things more yeah. which i like for to sure see. Yep. um yep. it's like even the best crafted headline is probably or subject line has been used a hundred times like at least so yep. You do have to get really creative, which gets harder and harder with each passing day with oh, for sure. billions of emails going there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What, Absolutely. the three, 20 billion, you said? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So huge. we've been we've been talking about it quite a bit. Uh, I guess in and out, we've been seeing it quite a bit. Is uh, the kind of segmenting your lists. And if you're a marketer, you, you obviously understand what it means to segment your email lists and the importance of it. But you know, if you're a small business owner and you're just starting to get into email marketing, 
uh, mm -hmm. whether you're a subscription-based company or whether you just want to inform your customers uh, with a newsletter, it's really important mm -hmm. to make sure that you segment this already audience and create different lists and organize people, organize your list and just don't have a mass uh, contact list where you just spam everyone with the same email. Because right. within this article, it kind of goes to show um, kind of email list segmentation results. So it, it, it results in like an increased open rate, an increased greater email relevance, right? Uh, a lower unsubscribe rate, which we talked about earlier, uh, better delivery, increased sales, and the list goes on, right? So as you're segmenting these emails to people and but down here, we can see that you can segment by location, role of industry, you know, a content consumed, etc. It really makes those emails more relevant to those people. So if you have someone who's maybe maybe you're hosting a webinar, right? And you want to send an email out to your webinar registrant list, right? Well, you're not going to send uh, a pre-recorded uh, version of the or uh, sorry, um, a, a VOD of the webinar that just went live to someone who, um, you know, either uh, registered, but they haven't seen it yet, or um, you've sent it to a, um, I guess you could say kind of like a, a fake live webinar as well. So um, it, it just gives people more context on the types of emails that they get and get information that's personalized to them. Yeah, and I love the webinar example because that's the classic example of like, did they attend your webinar or not? So you're going to send a follow-up email because that's just kind of marketing 101 after the webinar. Mm -hmm. But whether or not they yeah. attended it or not is going to dictate what it says. And you would look kind of like a fool if you sent someone a webinar being like, sorry, we missed you. And they were like, I was there. I was, yeah. Be yeah. Really yeah. Be exactly, <laughs> right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, for sure. And we have um, yeah. like we have a uh, we use Active Campaign, um, and later on uh, we have some examples, and we'll showcase the tool uh, near the end of the live. But it really has a really um, effective way to segment your audience, but also lead score them along the way. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure you can actually create funnels, which is really great through automation. There are automation features where you can. Uh, automatically segment these people so yeah. it's like i mean as a small business owner or even a marketer you don't want to be going through manually sifting through all no. of your contacts basically going okay you go here you go there did the did x person on the webinar mm -hmm. right yeah it's a lot of work so you want to make sure that it's all automated it's all working properly so that you can focus more on um creating uh, appealing content and personalized content that your audience is going to use for sure yeah, exactly Awesome. Yeah, and I understand the appeal, like as a small bootstrap company, potentially of going with the freemium MailChimp, because like as a freemium product, I like it, it's good. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're only doing super basic email, and like, you're just kind of trying to get a, a minimal viable product out and just like, I need just like a basic email campaign. Mm -hmm. That's okay, I can do that. <clears throat> but my problem is switching email platforms is a pain in the butt. Yeah. So like if all of a sudden your email marketing blows up and then yes, you have huge lists and you want this extra capability down the road, then yes, you're going to have to undertake switching that over. And it's like, is the time it would take to do that worth the cost of the larger platform? Very true. Sure. And like, maybe it's not for you. Every business is different, mm -hmm. but just saying like, definitely think of like down the road, do you want to have to switch all your templates, potentially rebuild them and all your lists and everything? Even your automation. Yeah. yeah. All your automations, automations can take a long time to build yeah. too, right? So yeah. Oh, yeah. Use your yeah. historical analytics potentially, depending on what yeah. you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So just consider like two years from now, how big do you think your company and your lists will be? Mm -hmm. And uh, consider that MailChimp and now all those things charge usually by list size and things like that too. Yeah. So look at your budget exactly. that way as well. For sure. Mm -hmm. And now the last uh, the last tip that we'll touch upon on life, I, I mean, I wanted to dive into this article more in depth just because I, I really like the tips that they gave uh, for both marketers and small businesses. Yeah. Um, but the last uh, tip that they have here is just making your emails more mobile friendly. And we've been talking about it more and more and more how mobile first is the way that uh, the world is moving, right? Uh, very few people, I mean, probably right now, more people are on their computers more than ever, I would argue. However, yeah. with, for pre pre-COVID, um, everyone's on their phones, whether they're on the go, uh, in transit, you know, um, it, it's Even a mobile first world, right? So if, if your email looks like garbage when someone opens it up on their phone, um, I, I doubt that uh, they're going to go back and try and open it on their yeah. desktop just because it doesn't appeal to them. They're not going to open it, right? Yeah, and I've had people say like, oh, my audience is predominantly desktop. I don't need that, you know, to be first and foremost. But it's just considering like we've all been on our phones 
where maybe you do typically check your email on your desktop, but you have a notification come across while you're texting someone and you click on it and you take a look. So mm -hmm. it's just when you're talking about email marketing percentages and open rates, which are typically kind of slim, every little bit counts, you know? Yeah. So like, you don't want to just disregard that audience, even if it isn't number one. Right. Um, and it's a lot of design factors too, I find. Like a shout out to all of our graphic designers who have to deal with what looks nice on mobile and desktop yeah. email wise. Yeah. Because it can be yeah. hard. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. Cool. Alrighty. Um, so kind of going uh, through some of these articles, they all kind of talk about really the same type of tips. So some of them have different tips and I think it's important for us to kind of go through and discuss them too. Um, so OptiMonster, uh, they have a really great article here. It's very similar to um, the um, uh, the life marketing article, but um, you know, keeping your list fresh. We talked about that a little bit, right? We talked about the importance of segmenting your list, but also um, avoiding spam filters. I think that this one is um, usually gets swept yeah. under the, the rug a little bit and people, it's one of the last mm -hmm. things people think about. Um, but it's important to make sure that your emails that are getting sent to maybe thousands of people or hundreds of people aren't going into their spam box, right? Mm -hmm. um, because people obviously don't check their spam boxes very often, if at all. No. Yeah. Um, and they have some really good tips here on how to make sure that uh, you can keep your emails from falling into spam folders. Now, I will say when I first started marketing myself, um, I used to add exclamation marks at the end of my uh, email subject lines and even some punctuation things. And I came to find out that um, that's one of the uh, red flags for a spam filter yes. is an exclamation mark or uh, yeah. bolded or all capped letters, right? All caps, yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, so they have some nice tips here. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. And like the better platforms usually have a spam metric that they'll actually tell you right. if uh, yeah. some, you know, if you triggered the spam filter. And they also, um, if I do believe, Active Campaign and other ones also have a spam test. So like when you yeah. send a spam yeah. test email or a test email, you can send it to yourself for viewing, um, and you can send it as a like, would this trigger anything? Because yes, exclamation marks definitely. Um, over the top sales language as well. I know sometimes you're tempted to write congratulations like, if someone's like free, 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 free. Yeah. 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 So don't or do buy it. clearance discount. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Repetitive sales words. language. Yeah. Or so, even bait and switch too. Bait and switch is actually yeah. really important as well, right? Mm -hmm. and location too. Um, yeah. It's a yeah. And also including, I think this is very important, includes an easy way for subscribers to opt out of your emails. Now, this is um, pretty much legal. Like, you need to have this on yeah, your emails you uh, for sure. I know sometimes we've had clients in the past who ask us, um, you know, do I have to include the unsubscribe <laughs> button? It's like, yes, you do yeah, yeah. have to. But it's a good thing. Don't look at people unsubscribing. Like Courtney said, don't look at people unsubscribing yeah. from your emails as a negative thing, so to speak. I mean, if they're doing it in mass, you probably did something wrong. Um, but it's just it's it's them segmenting themselves as well. Right. It's them qualifying themselves if they're not interested. And it's something that, you know, they they've even if they've already purchased, you know what I mean? Don't send people in it, uh, an email with an offer if they've already accepted the offer at the very beginning, yeah. right? Yeah, you so. don't want to like annoy your uh, customers or your audience either, right? So mm -hmm. there, there's a good line. It's a, it's a relationship that you have to kind of figure out a good balance, right? For sure. Well, I just find like as with all copy, when I write a subject line or a blog post or a tweet, whatever it is, it's like, do you sound like a robot? Do you sound like a company <laughs> tweeting? Or is this something an actual human would write? And yeah. like, do you think that way? Like, would you send yeah. an email that's like, here's your brand new guide you're going to love? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, yeah. yeah, no. I actually get good open rates when I write RE with the, you know, like the regarding kind of email, like just yep. like you would when you're telling someone something important, right. you know? So I find yeah. the most serious, straightforward emails, like normal subject lines do well because people want to see what's Red. inside or if they're expecting it. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, agreed. Cool. Um, next point we'll talk about is timing. Timing is everything as well with email campaigns. Um, if you're rushing to throw it in an email campaign, um, say maybe at uh, five o'clock on a Friday, odds are uh, it's not going to be that successful. You want to make sure um, that you're sending your email at an optimal date or time throughout the week. <laughs> and yep. This and guy. notice your time zones, please, people. I, I've seen that mistake once sending to a list of yep. like 70,000 people and ended up emailing people in like 1 a.m. because they didn't consider yep. the time zones. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's a good For that's sure. A good 
Yeah. yeah. Although some platforms will intelligently note that and they will um, do that kind of feature, but I think you have to set it up. I'm not sure. After your campaign, we'll do it. But uh, yeah. yeah, it actually, um, through their automation system, it will automatically do it for you. So you don't even have to set it up, which is actually really great. Um, but this graph here, uh, if you guys can see that, it's basically showing the distribution of subscribers optimal day of the week. And you can see here, like Friday, five o'clock on a Friday, boom, it just drops right off the bar Saturday, yeah. Sunday. No one's opening up their phone on Saturdays and Sundays. They've been opening it all week, as you can see. So, uh, I mean, if you're trying to send out an email on Friday afternoon, that's that's extremely yep. important with a special offer or something like that. Odds are people aren't going to open it. And the same goes for time of day as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, from, uh, I mean, midnight all the way up until like 10 o'clock in the morning, or sorry, midnight until I'd probably say around 4 a.m., no yep. one's really opening up the emails. Everyone's in bed, right? But around 4 a.m., you get maybe some of those early, early risers. It just spikes, right, up until 10 mm -hmm. o'clock, and then it slowly, slowly, slowly mm -hmm. dies down. Because a lot of times, people before the day, people are lying in bed, looking through their phones, looking at their emails, going through their calendar, just to mentally prepare for the day. And it's a great way to kind of uh, try and get in contact with someone as well through email. Mm -hmm. One thing, just to kind of play devil's advocate, is just one thing people love to test is time of day that you send. And I noticed that because obviously most people want to send during the optimum time. So that's also when you get a lot of emails as well. So one right. thing I do see people test, um, you know, on social media as well is sending at those lower frequency times just to see if your engagement will be higher. Mm -hmm. um, so like you can still play around with things and test them. I would just advise test one thing at a time. Don't yeah. try and improve all your metrics at once. But um, yeah, yeah. do what's right with you and your metrics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's also built into active campaign, A-B testing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then a couple, I'm gonna probably spit fire through these last ones here. They're important, but they kind of all relate to each other. It's more copy related, you know, kind of writing like a friend. So here they talk about, you know, asking how your Saturday, Sunday morning was, if you're emailing them uh, yep. yeah, on, on the weekend or something like that, or just asking how they are. Um, something personal like that makes them feel like you're actually writing the email to them rather a huge list, write amazing content every time, uh, this kind of self explains, or you want to make sure that you're optimizing your content as you go along. I mean, some emails are definitely going to be better performers than others. And I think that's definitely a whole other subject, uh, for a different live. Another time is how do you make sure that you write amazing content all the time when in reality, yeah. sometimes you might not. Right. So for sure. Um, but also injecting some humor. So here they have like a kind of a funny example here where they kind of talk about, hey, first thing I tried contacting you regarding a value proposition, haven't heard back, let me know if, and they give three responses <laughs> that are relative. And then the joke is you're being chased by a hippo and you need to call animal control. Yeah, so cute. just something funny <laughs> to kind of lighten up the mood, right? If, if these people know that they're getting an automated email, sometimes throwing in some humor, uh, especially if it's within your brand of voice, uh, definitely helps. Uh, definitely bit, helps, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, our friend um, and our email list, Russell, or does that. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm always a fan of adding gifts to emails, as long as it doesn't like cause any issues with rendering it or anything like that. Right, I think yeah. any sort of motion just like always catches the eye too from a design perspective as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that splash of humor, that splash of human is always good mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure yeah for sure yeah, yeah. and this kind of transitions us into the next article that we're going to be kind of talking about uh this is a mention i love mention uh it's fantastic i love reading their content and even their platform it's awesome yeah. um but this this uh this article kind of talks about the more creative ways that you can actually improve your email marketing mm -hmm. campaigns mm -hmm. and this is kind of like a little bit more fun to kind of talk about just because um it's different kind of cool ways that you kind of see people using these email marketing uh, uh strategies mm -hmm. so down here we can kind of see utilize behavior-based segmentation right so yep. which content do they uh do they opt in for uh how do they interact and engage with your content then which kind of types of content convert them but also using kind of dynamic content right so um maybe pairing nords from here kind of uses dynamic product recommendations using a variety of different variables such as weather or seasons right, right. this is something really nice to do um, but also kind of focusing email marketing efforts to abandon carts as well. That's, this is extremely important as well. If you, if you have a, uh, an online store, an e-commerce store, um, using a abandoned cart feature is actually, um, 
quite significant. And you hear uh, right here sending out one or uh, two re-marketing emails can kind of recover five to eleven percent of lost sales from abandoned cart sales, right? So that's eleven five to eleven percent more sales that you you could be making if you're right. if you implement these features. Yeah, that's one of the first places I look when I do like an audit of an e-commerce store is what is your, do you have an abandoned cart feature like strategy in place yet? Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's a second thought for people. I know they're busy with, you know, there's a lot of logistics that go into it, but uh, definitely kind of a low hanging fruit, so to speak, in terms of what you could do to increase that sale, those sales. For sure, for sure, for sure, absolutely. And then they also talk about kind of uh, personalizing your customer's onboarding process. So the first email that, they, that they're gonna receive from you, I would argue is gonna be the most important, uh, just yeah. in terms of the way that you structure that email, the content that's in it, the language that's in it, right? Thank them for signing up, first things first, right? Um, this, this is a really good example, right? It, it's very clean as uh, a, quite a large image uh, right in the center. And it's thanking them for signing up for the updates and things like that, sending occasional emails. They also kind of have a little CTA in there, a little bit hidden uh, for people to click, right? So, and also give social. So I think it's just very nice. I think you just making sure that the first touch point in your, of your campaigns uh, are well thought out uh, and they're not too in, in the face, right? Because if, if you do send someone the, the like a first email um, or a first point of contact and it's just like packed with like CDA buttons and things like that, odds are yeah, people bye, are just going to be bye. like yeah. overwhelmed and then be like, okay, okay, bye, I'm done. I'm, yeah. I'm not opening them anymore. Yeah. And, right. and watch your, I would agree with that. Definitely the first email is your first impression, but also please watch your frequency. Like just because I gave you my email doesn't mean I want like 10 emails from you in the first 48 hours. Like dial it back a little with your onboarding. Like even some of the best platforms I use as a marketer, the onboarding emails they're sending are excellent, but like be real, like just cause I just signed up for your platform doesn't mean I've had the time to go through every little feature. Like mm -hmm. give me a little bit of time and space it out. Like that's, for that's sure. what onboarding is, yeah. right? So right. yeah, give them some breathing room, some time to give, like look through the content <laughs> you're giving them, yeah. right? Yeah, frankly, <laughs> yeah, definitely, that's a, that's a good point. And uh, I think in that article there too, it says, um, 57% of the consumers are willing to exchange their personal information, which is, mm -hmm. which means they're, they're willing to listen to what you're saying. They're willing to um, see your content and, you know, your offers. They're, they're willingly going into that knowing. So uh, like what Courtney said, just, just try to frequency and be respectful of their inbox. For sure. Yeah. And if you're, you know, to listen to like what April's saying, if you're thinking like, whoa, people aren't signing up for mine, like what's wrong with mine? No one wants to hear what I have to say. It's like, go to your website right now. And if your form says join our newsletter or sign up to our newsletter, that is the problem. <laughs> Stop using no. newsletter terminology and brand yeah. it. Like that's, yes, that's what you're offering them, updated news each month or whatever your frequency mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. But what actually is it? Yeah. Is it new products that are trending? Is it's it sale. a guide that's going to help me with my business? Like, what are you actually going to give me each month? Not just the latest blog post you published because you want traffic. Like, yeah. that's not going to cut it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's right to the point. I think that's that's very important. Yeah, I think newsletter, like you were saying, is kind of um, an older term. So if you just just be honest, right? Because mm -hmm. there people already know what they're giving their email for. They know that, you know, it's probably going to be some offers and some good tips and they're willing to receive that information. But yeah, it, it's literally the first thing I test all the time is the form. Mm -hmm. And it's a super simple test. Mm -hmm. Go to your website right now and just test the form, like the actual yep. link copy on it. And I promise you could increase your conversion rates just by doing that. Yeah. Like, yes. especially if you already have a really strong form, then good, you're good. Don't listen to me. But if you've got a really sad week off or there, like start yeah. from there and work down the funnel. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Great. Agreed. Well, um, I think that's pretty well does it for our articles. I mean, we do have a, a few more uh, from HubSpot that uh, um, the bees will drop in the chat room for you guys to just to go over. Uh, HubSpot has a really good guide to email marketing, pretty well goes through a lot of the things we talked about a little bit more in depth, but it holds your hand a little bit more, which is which is really nice. Um, and then uh, Neil Schaffer as well, uh, he has a really insightful um, article on uh, how to grow email lists with uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook as well. Um, which is actually really uh, important. And, uh, and we, we've done it in the past as well. I mean, we talked about it at, at the very beginning of April with um, yeah. lead gen with Facebook forums, right? Uh, email yeah. capture with Facebook forums. Um, this is definitely a route. But I think for the next 10 minutes, we only have 10 minutes left. Uh, we want to go through some of the email uh, examples that we've seen. 
um, and that we've been talking about yeah. quite a bit. Um, so let's For dive sure. into some of these that we have. Um, so the first one here, uh, Courtney, uh, you sent these ones to us uh, before, the ones that you uh, wanted to talk about on the live. So uh, this one, this first one, M&M's, M&M's reward system. What's, what's going on with this guy? Yeah, so these were literally just went into my inbox uh, this week and wanted to get like super recent examples of things that are happening right now. And like M&Ms, I love their marketing um, and I love their branding just because it's so solid every time. And this email, it isn't revolutionary. Like it's not like it's the best looking email I've ever seen, but immediately upon opening it because of the branding, I know it's M&Ms and I know, you know, yes, they have their little obligatory COVID announcement thing in there. Ignore that. But when you see, like, click to load your offers, like it knows what I want. It's not trying to force strange content down my throat. Right. It knows I want to know the sales because the M&M's mm -hmm. flyer is like their number one vehicle for sales right. and promotions. Straight so, to the point. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if that's what I want, then give me a digital version of your flyer, which is what they've done. And it's based mm -hmm. on what I purchased in the past, like once I, you know, if I actually engage with it. So there is an intel intelligent kind of algorithm to it as well, I believe. So, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's straight up simple. Like, what did I sign up for? I signed up for offers. So don't send me a recipe on like your newest, mm -hmm. like how do you use your newest product to make like a, yeah. a boho yeah. picnic? Like, I don't need that. I just want it. You know, here's my stuffed jalapeno poppers. Yeah, by everybody. for sure, like, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that <laughs> look, there's there's a lot of content within this newsletter, but they do it in a way that you know, it's, it's content, like you said, Courtney, it's content that you want, mm -hmm. right? This is people, this is, you want to see the sales. You want to see if you can save money on your jalapeno poppers this week. You know what yeah. I mean? You want to make sure, see maybe even what's new, right? I know uh, a few years ago, they came out with uh, their like pre-made poutines in a cup, right? And people were going mad for them. They were actually sold out for quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what? Yeah. If you're giving people content that they'd like to see, especially uh, late night snacks like this, I mean, um, people are going to go through it no matter kind of how many times they have to scroll with their thumb, right? Mm -hmm. And they also made it super easy. Like I know this is an image grab, but when you um, click through, it'll take you right through the coupon. Like it has it right there, get $2 off. And that's it's what they're known for, you know, like do yeah. what's made you successful. Like these mm -hmm. flyers, when they put out their flyers, everyone runs in to buy this stuff. It's just their model. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, it, you know, just double down and make a digital version of what you're already doing mm -hmm. well in brick and mortar. Yeah. That's what I would yeah. say. You don't have to rewrite the formula, right? You just, mm -hmm. yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. It's, it's an email. We get it. But like, <laughs> thank you for giving me what I wanted and not nonsense content. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder what time of day they sent this because, you know, it kind of makes me hungry. So, yeah. Uh, Monday. It was Monday morning because it was like, you're going to do your shopping for the week. So right. it must be like a popular day for them. Yeah. I would guess. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Cool. cool. Moving on, so grassroots or law project. This is from Sean King. Um, so why don't we kind of dive in and see uh, this one? This one's a little bit more text heavy uh, than the um, M&M's one right off the bat. Yeah, this one is the other version. Uh, the M&M's one I would call like the retail one. You know, you'd use that for sales and flash sales and promotions. This is more the long form sales email that we mentioned earlier, um, which often is like, it's a more in-depth topic you're talking, talking about something that probably has like a emotional or like, you know, personal tie to the person in some way, whether it's a community mm -hmm. you're involved with, or obviously this is part of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, mm -hmm. So like extremely personal, he's giving lots of information. And the end goal here is to collect a donation. So like there is actually like a call to action to this and an end find like money goal here, but mm -hmm. he's going through it. And like, if you actually read the copy, it's extremely personal like an extremely heartfelt, whether or not Sean King wrote this himself or whether he has a great marketing team with yeah. him is, uh, I don't know, but that's good right. that I can't tell really. But yeah, um, yeah. it's just an example. Yeah, you don't always have to be really short and quick with your copy. It's just about being mm -hmm. concise with your copy. Right. Absolutely. Yep. It's it's that uh, you were saying before, Courtney. The the quote that you liked was, uh, you know, don't waste a sentence or um, something like that. Right. Yeah, and if you go through here, everything he has in here is either like a stat or a fact. There's no just like fluff. You know, it's very factual and very like lots of credibility and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, not fancy with design or anything, but that's not the style or purpose of this email. No. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to wrap up here. I think we have five minutes left, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. So Crate and Barrel as well. So this is the e-commerce, uh, again, probably uh, e-commerce focused uh, email. 
with an offer right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like this email because it's a remarketing example. Um, right. I just moved and I'm doing a bunch of decor shopping, full, <laughs> full transparency. Yeah. Yep. So they know, they see me looking, so they sent me this and it's literally like, it's just a discount because they knew I was looking at the decor section. Um, yep. Didn't enter my email or like, oh, uh, well, I guess I must have. I'd enter it everywhere because I'm a marketer <laughs> and I like to <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd recommend that for all marketers, engage with yeah. all marketing yep. to learn. But yeah. Yeah. There's there's a few things in here that I really like um, from a design standpoint, but also the kind of like customer journey as well. I like how they have the kind of like the bar at the very top. It kind of reminds me of pop. I haven't been on their website yet, but I feel like their website has a very similar layout. So as a customer or a shopper from Crate and Barrel, um, this this would seem very familiar to yeah. you, right? Um, but what I also like too is if they're given a coupon code and things like that, their coupon code is in the email and they actually okay. have a barcode, a scannable barcode for their in stores as well. I find a lot of times is when you do get a promo code, uh, it takes you to a different page, whether uh, it opens up Safari or your internet browser, you have to fill out a few more things and then you get your, your email or your promo code, right? Here is just right here for you. All you have to do is open up the email, show it to the cache, uh, and you're good to go, right? So yeah. um, I, I think that definitely just cuts down the process. There's no funny business there. People know that, you know, when I'm going to get a crate and barrel email for 15% off, I'm not going to have to go through any hoops or anything like that to get that 15% off. So exactly. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I love that too. Mike, Michael's actually is very famous for doing the same thing. Yes, they um, they right. always have to. Yeah, they're like in everyone who's ever shopped for craft yeah. stuff knows about the Michaels email. <laughs> oh, and I love them. Yeah, I'd love to see their open rates. They must be excellent. Oh, they must be smiling. Yeah, even when yeah. I'm like in a shop when I was shopping pre-COVID, shopping at Michaels, um, and I I knew they would always have a sale or a, one of these scannable um, barcodes, and I would just type the email subject, and I know I would get one, and I would mm -hmm. just show it to um, on my phone. So yeah. and I just show it to. Um, you know, someone who's checked me out and then mm -hmm. I, I would get the promotion right then and there. And it's like, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. and you know, it, it's like we talked about before mobile first, right? I mean, this is why mobile first is number one. Mm -hmm. People will get the email, they go into the store, they have their phone with them, bam, 15% exactly. off. Right. So. Yeah. And to sure. Matt's point, like the least friction possible, like that's something I learned in like day one of marketing. And that's still true to this day. Like just make it as easy as possible. So like, you know, m &Ms, if you can click that coupon and immediately collect it, you know, grassroots law, I can click donate and it happens, you know, here I can redeem the coupon. Just, you know, a lot of people send emails with fluff and like no real purpose. I think at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's like, what do you actually want the person to yeah. do when they get this email? Exactly. You know? Yeah. So. Think of a clear goal in mind, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Cool. And I think we have one more before we go into a quick uh, active campaign. I just kind of want to show the way that uh, they mm -hmm. use their automation services. But uh, this one's a gift card that you uh, sent over and it's from Uncommon Goods. Right. Cool. So this is a uh, neat commerce. There's strictly commerce. There's no brick and mortar element. And that's why I wanted to include it because the others are driving in store sales as well as online. Right. This one is like, I love their email marketing. I bought a um, a, a Habs hockey puck for my dad last month. Hey, month. nice. Yeah. yeah. Signed by the Habs. They played it actually on the rink in a game that you watched. Ooh, so I okay. uh, really love this site on Common Goods for gifts. But they actually since have like followed, like, yes, it's just their algorithm. But every time a special occasion comes, they have an email automation that recommends gifts for that occasion for me. And like, they're actually thoughtful. They're not just like yeah. a feed. It's, uh, you know, they clearly do their segmentation very well and they clearly have right. some really in-depth email marketing, but you can see like they go through and uh, the, the email's longer form, but still lovely branding. Nice, I like the white space. I'm always a fan of yes. nice and clean emails um, and the branding always really good. Yeah. Like never, you know, with the gift, like I said, just showcase right. your products. So it's like is, a personalized catalog. Yeah, this is very cool. homepage esque. Nice. I will say it's very yeah. kind of you know what I mean. It's uh, um, mm -hmm. this to me looks like it could very well be a you know like a, a mobile homepage of, of someone's website, right? Um, and I think that yeah, like 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 you said, Courtney, it's it's familiar. You know what I mean? It's not like um, just generalized stuff. It's actually personalized towards you. And I think look, like I think if if you're willing to put the time into your email uh, segmentation and kind of your automation, yeah. maybe. Maybe even let your customers know right off the bat in that welcome email. But like, look, 
if you, the the way that you engage with our emails uh, can provide uh, more specific products to you, for example, right? right? So letting yeah. them know that like, as you engage with our emails more and more and more, um, we're, you're gonna be getting content that's better suited towards your needs and your wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they don't definitely. inundate me like every single week with new products, which I'm sure like their inventory is huge. It's right. specifically on holidays, like actually like two weeks before mm -hmm. Mother's Day, I got an email that was a list of actual, you know, just their top, probably most popular Mother's mm -hmm. Day gifts. But mm -hmm. I just, uh, I love people who get creative beyond like the basic segmentation. Mm -hmm. right. Like we should all segment based on open rates and click throughs and things like that. But when you get creative about your own business, that's when mm -hmm. it's like, that's when it can really work well for you. For sure. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Absolutely. Yep. Now, um, I think we're running a little bit out of time here, but uh, I will show the um, automation of Active Campaign just before we go, just because I feel like it's Active Campaign in general is a very powerful tool. Um, but here, uh, when you do create an automation, you have different kind of uh, categories that you can pick through, whether you're an e commerce store, whether you're a blogger, uh, a consulting agency, or even real estate, right? So, say I want to do a. Um, I don't know, let's let's do a webinar. So I'll search up for webinar. So this is a webinar reminder series, okay? So I'm gonna click continue. And then what it's going to do is, is it's gonna create a template for me to use and I can manipulate that template a little bit more uh, if I'd like. Um, and this is what it looks like, right? So point of contact is uh, the person subscribes to any list, right? So um, I can have my list set up where it's people who've registered, people who haven't registered, late registrations, uh, et cetera, right? Then it goes boom. Okay, 30 days until the webinar. Now you might want to might not want to do uh, 30 days, but like I said, like this is just like this is just a template, right? And right. then you can go wait until current time is greater or equal to 9 a.m. So again, Courtney, that's like we're talking about. They're taking in the context time zone into consideration, which is excellent. And then it kind of goes down into week two, you know, it goes one week. And then as you get closer to the webinar date, it increases the frequency of the emails. Now, um, you can delete the, uh, as many emails as you like if you find that this is too much uh, for your contact list. By all means, you're able to kind of uh, interact with it that way, create email templates. You can even add specific elements into um, this uh, template as well. Um, so whether or not a contact is maybe tagged, maybe they downloaded an asset through your uh, webinar, right? You wanna make sure that you tag that contact, uh, contact and say downloaded asset or downloaded asset, and then you can spe uh, specify it, right? In case they download another asset in the future. Um, and that's right. a very strong, very strong way to organize your, your contact lists. Instead of having everyone in one big list of say like 20,000 contacts, if you have, making sure that you organize them through and make sure that you put them where they need to be, it's gonna give them that content that they're looking for, but it's also gonna make sure that they're engaging with content that, mm -hmm. that you send them, right? Yeah, 100%, I think it's a great example. And it's also like often it, people ask the question like what next? like how, you know, this is just a visual example of your strategy, which you need to start with so that you can see, you know, before you send that one off email, you know, where is the next, like, what's the next step for this person? How do they become a customer? And for if you sure. can't answer that, then that's probably why your emails are really fluffy <laughs> and not doing well. Very true. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Cool. Mind, like, yeah, build it and put it in place and you can always revise it later too. Like what Matt mm -hmm. just showed you, if yeah. you looked at his analytics and saw that step two had a really poor open rate, well, then you can go yep. and revise the email, you know, or perhaps test what mm -hmm. time you send it or mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. And just before we go, um, the bees did send me something uh, earlier this week. Um, we did have a, uh, a little, um, uh, I think it was, a, it was a poll on our uh, Facebook, yeah. uh, sorry, Twitter our Twitter account, we were kind of calling all marketers in the space uh, to kind of finish the sentence. In my opinion, email marketing is blank. Um, the majority of people did say email marketing is booming. So uh, Ooh, that's, a, that's a good uh, indication that the marketers within <laughs> Kitchener Waterloo region know what they're doing. And yep. uh, they, they know that email marketing is far from dead. Uh, so I hope that uh, throughout this week's episode, <laughs> we uh, laid that out for you guys and we helped you uh, realize uh, some yeah, cool creative um, ways that you yeah. could uh, improve your email marketing campaigns for sure. Cool. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So don't listen to those clickbait articles. They're just trying <laughs> yeah. to get your traffic. Yeah. Right? They're just yeah. Crazy. <laughs> for sure. 
Alrighty, cool. Well, uh, that does it for episode 138 of Live at the Hive. Uh, Courtney, I'd like to thank you for coming back on. Uh, all, yeah. As always, you're always welcome back. And mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll see everyone uh, for episode 139 of Live at the yeah. Hive. And uh, Dan will be back for us. So it'll be good live. Yeah. All right. You guys awesome. Have yeah, everyone have a good weekend. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. See ya. Bye.